Welcome back to the Laboratory Shaker project. In the last part we basically finished that thing and tested it. Cartier link in the description. However, the tests <laughs> revealed uh, two weaknesses. That is the tests revealed one weakness and at the end I discovered a second weakness. The first weakness is that threaded M3 rod here, which has far too much flex when transferring force to the upper part, the seesawing part of the case. And that leads to some interesting phenomena. <laughs> I mean, uh, first some resonance effects. And second, a lot of flex under real load. Five millimeters, 10 millimeters flex, that's too much. So that was number one. Second, the range of movement. So on this side, the range of movement is limited actually by the servo arm hitting the bottom part of the case. But in the other direction, the servo arm is able to lift up as far as it wants. And basically, if you depower that thing and the servo is no longer controlling the motion, we get a <clears throat> very steep angle here and that led to some catastrophe. After I switched the power off, the whole thing yeah, pivoted completely backward and yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So I want to address both issues before I really start using that thing with <laughs> some etching solution in the water bath on the top. Let's get started. Of course I have to disassemble the whole thing first, but that should be pretty easy. Okay, <laughs> another minor enhancement, uh, thread only the far hole and make the other uh, smooth so you can stick it through and thread it just in at the other side. Oh, <clears throat> I forgot, <clears throat> I have the grub screws in, just a second. And that's basically it. Oh yeah, and I have to get out that thingy here, my rod, but that should be also quite easy. Okay, that's it. Let's first talk about my M3 threaded rod. I put some numbers in an online beam deflection calculator, just Google for it, uh, you find dozens of them. And the numbers were 100 millimeters beam length. That's the length of my axle here from wall to wall. And 55 millimeters from one wall uh, where the rod is threaded in. So fixed to my yeah, connecting rod here where the force is exerted. And for different diameters of a round beam, because my axle is round, and different forces, I got those numbers here. So basically for a two millimeter rod, beam, whatever, at 10 newtons, it's two millimeters deflection. And if you look at the table, this is quite linear. So basically per kilogram, two millimeters deflection. For a three millimeter rod per kilogram, 0.4 millimeter deflection. And an M3 rod is somewhere between two and three millimeters. If we just go up one millimeter, the deflection per kilogram goes down to 0.12 millimeter. So the plan is to replace my M3 threaded rod by a massive four millimeter rod. That should do the trick, hopefully. And of course, I will also have to uh, widen up that hole here in my connecting rod to four millimeters. But that should be simple, hopefully. 
Let's start by sawing off a 200 mm piece of that steel rod here. And clean up the ends a little bit. That steel rod sat in my cellar for, uh, I don't know, several decades, so it has a little bit of rust on it. Let's remove that before we proceed. A wee bit of steel wool should do the trick. And for good measure, a bit of stainless steel polishing paste at the end. I want to put more of a face on this end here before I start cutting the thread. I want to cut the thread 8 millimeters in, so the thickness of my wall plus 4 millimeters the thickness of the die, so I can be sure I have a nice thread all the way. Just if you're wondering what kind of chips that kind of thread cutting produces. On the other end, I need a slot for my screwdriver to, yeah, <laughs> to screw the whole thing in. Let's widen up the hole in the connecting bar uh, real carefully <laughs> to four millimeters. That was actually quite easy. By the way, I used that bendy piece of uh, spring metal uh, as a parallel to place my connecting rod, uh, yeah, parallel <laughs> into the vise. And now my four millimeter rod goes easily or axle through my connecting rod, yeah. Uh, it's still enough beef left there and yeah, without too much wiggle. So it's a nice, nice fit for this application. Now for the holes in the seesawing upper part. I need to widen that former M3 hole here to 4 millimeters just to stick the 4 millimeter rod in. On the other side, I have first to pre-drill it with 3.3 millimeters before I can cut in an M4 thread. And now I should be able to get my 4mm rod in here without too much difficulties. Okay, I reworked that hole a little bit off camera with the file because I didn't quite hit the other end. But yeah, here we go. I um, will be out of sight in a second. And in it goes. Wonderful! Now that we've dealt with the flex in my axle or rod, or in this application really an oversized overlong pin, let's tackle my range of movement problem. I've already shown that in the intro, but anyway, if my seesawing part goes down on that side, its range of movement is limited by the servo arm hitting the bottom here. And I still have a space of 13.5 millimeters left between the seesawing part and my base. On the other side, nothing is hindering the servo arm to lift up even further and to close that 13.5 millimeter gap. So the idea is to build up my base here at the sides by 13.5 millimeters. 
And I intend to do that by gluing on a 9.5 mm high piece of polycarbonate with some 4 mm high bumpers on top. I considered building up the walls here over the whole width, but that would look a little bit unwieldy. So I have also four of these pieces left from the build and I will cut them to the right height and glue them on just centered here. It's, it's uh, yeah, not that bulky. And I have four of them, so if <laughs> there should be a mishap while sawing them, I still have a second free try. Both pieces came out at 9.7. That's good enough for this application and I'm happy. So let's clear up that mess that is, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, yeah, these polycarbonate chips, they are everywhere and they stick everywhere. All surfaces have been cleaned with alcohol as usual. I have my parts, I have a little wood stop here at the back so I can center them properly. And of course I have my glue. So let's glue. So we let that dry now overnight and then we'll continue. It's the next day, I already removed the clamps and cleaned these surfaces, so let's put our silicon, I think it's silicon, silicon bumpers on, if I can get one off. <laughs> Not that easy. I And that's it. Now let's put everything together again. Now we can assemble the whole thing again. And yeah, like last time, we start with our pin here in the back, which should be a wee bit easier because I just have to stick it through. It's hot again today, so I have... Uh, <laughs> little bit of sweaty fingers. That was easy. Now hitting the back. Yeah, we're in. So I first go a little bit counterclockwise here until I feel the thread snap in and then I screw it in, which is also quite easy all a very nice fit. Now for our axle. Just have to hit the hole. That was no problem last time, so it shouldn't be a problem this time. And finally, our two grub screws to keep the axle in place. That's it. We're finished. Uh, <laughs> now on to the testing. So the first thing you noticed is if I move the seesaw just against the unpowered servo, there's only very little flex here in my pin and the range of movement of my seesaw is obviously also limited. Now let's see if we can still, well, if we still have that resonancy effect due to the flex of the pin here. Okay, that should be maximum speed. Now let's go up with the stroke. And no, this is not flexing, that's just a trick of the eye. Maybe at a lower speed. Nope, 
no more resonancy. So this was really the springy effect of the M3 pin here, which was a little bit too skinny. Now let's put some load on that. I put my laboratory water bath, uh, yeah, card here, link in the description on top and filled everything up with the water, one kilo down here, one liter and one kilo up here, plus the whole weight of the stuff. And yeah, there's no more wiggling at the end. Let's maybe reduce the stroke a little bit. And go up with the speed. Well, that looks nice enough. Okay, now I'm, <laughs> you've seen the way for me here. I cannot go any faster, but maybe more stroke again. taking risks here. Okay, let's go down with the stroke and the speed or both. Uh, let's have a look what's going on inside here, huh? Yeah, there seems to be only very little flex, so nothing like a half a centimeter or so. Let's speed things up. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now I'm getting a, a little bit too fast. The wave is building up above. And if I depower that thing now, it can at most, yeah, go to that position. Everything's fine. So that was the latest installment in my laboratory shaker project. Uh, there will be probably some more parts in the future, but these will all center on the software inside here. Yeah, I promised you I clean up the code at one point, but uh, yeah, I have to <coughs> motivate myself to do it. I also want to uh, change the code slightly. For example, if I stop that, I want to stop it at the level position and start from the level position. And maybe I exchange the salvo because the salvo, yeah, uh, you saw that uh, review here card, a link in the description, was quite shitty. Um, yeah, till then, bye.